Hello, my name is Tim Dahlgren, and this is my final presentation for Finance 361, where I'm going to do it over the Brexit case. Uh, so Brexit is the fact that Britain voted to leave the European Union, and the vote was actually fairly close, but it had a lot of people involved. About 71%, about 72% people uh, voted in this, and... Uh, the vote was ultimately 51.9% to leave to a 48.1% to stay. So clearly the two parties involved are the European Union, which is a political partnership uh, for involving 28 European countries. Uh, we've all heard about the European Union. We've heard about the Euro. Uh, and then the other party involved would be uh, Britain or the United Kingdom. And while these two parties are the main ones involved, it can cause, because of such a giant status and giant implication of this, it can cause worldwide change because if Britain leaves under uh, the European Union, then they will have different trade agreements and stuff like that that were not set up by the European Union. And so they'd actually have to follow uh, the World Trade Organization like guidelines in order to start doing trade with other countries and stuff like that, uh, they'd have to set it up themselves. The main reason that Brits voted for Brexit, according to Forbes, uh, was the fact that a lot of people did not like the way that they treated the 2008 uh, recession. Uh, an example was there was 20% unemployment in Southern Europe, uh, but the lives of Southern Europe compared to Germany was very different. So although they're all under a blanket European Union, Germany only had an unemployment problem of 4.2. So they think that the European Union did not step in help as much as they could have. And they just kind of let bygones be bygones. So one of the interesting things is this is... This was voted on about two years ago, and it's still going on today because it's been delayed and delayed, and a lot of people are wondering, well, can it be reversed? It could actually be reversed. They could cancel Article 50, which was the intention of leaving the European Union, but it looks like that's not going to happen. Right now, the set date for them to leave is October 31st, uh, but it could be delayed again. We aren't sure quite yet, um, but... The main reason why it's such a big deal is because it's essentially severing a political agreement between 27 other nations and Britain. And so many experts believe that the second that Britain does actually recede from the European Union, like that October 31st date comes through, uh, that there's going to be a very adverse impact on business and economics in Britain solely because there's going to be a lot of things that were stated in the European Union that they no longer abide to so there's going to be a gray area here and there in a lot of businesses and it could cause issues with employment it can cause issues with trade it can cause issue with business agreements between country and country international uh, they'd have to set up trade agreements all over again uh, tariffs, taxes, everything like that. So that is the main implication. So while it might be better in the long run, the short term, it's not going to be great uh, just because they have so much information that they're going to have to figure out on their own. The main reason why the European Union really cares about this is it's showing that you can leave this. Uh, they, they've been standing for a long time, uh, but nothing is forever. So the fact that Britain's leaving and they're worried that maybe Germany or France or someone like that might leave, which would start dissolving the economy that they have within themselves. And it's also causing a lot of strength in anti-immigration parties because of uh, the immigrations from Syria and stuff like that. They think that because of people leaving the European Union, which is so open to the immigration, that... If they were to leave, there's going to be less immigration, less of a melting pot in Europe, and that could cause issues both economically and politically, along with, is it morally and ethically correct? 
so an example of a third party involved, because like I said, because of such big implications, uh, according to the balance, uh, Brexit, the Brexit vote, the Dow fell 610 points. Uh, the euro fell uh, 2% and the pound also fell. But the value of the dollar and gold in the U.S. stock market started increasing, and gold especially along with the value of the dollar, just because it seemed more stable. The European Union was in question after the vote to leave. So I think I understand where Britain's coming from. They want to take matters into their own hands and not have to have a parent figure hold, or, uh, standing over them. They kind of figure it out for themselves, do what's best for them. And that way, they're ultimately in charge of their own future. Uh, did I think they fully thought it through whenever they voted for it? Probably not. Uh, it's only going to take time to see how this develops and how the world adapts to it. If it's successful, I could see a lot of other countries leaving the European Union. If it's unsuccessful, uh, if there was a point where Britain wanted to come back into the European Union, would they let them? Uh, there's just a lot of interesting dynamics going on that ultimately is going to affect the economy around the world and trade around the world.